Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name's Dan, and today it's time to start reviewing the Jeep Gladiator that we've just been living out of for a year as we traveled all the way around Australia. So to kick off the review series, today I'm going to review the Renogy solar power battery charger setup that I designed and installed on this Jeep. So it's a huge improvement over what I had on the Jeep that I drove around Africa. How has it performed? What lessons did I learn? What will I do differently next time? All of that coming up on today's episode. So stick around, let's get into it. So to start things off, let's talk about the solar panel that I mounted onto the roof rack here on the Gladiator. I chose to go with a lightweight, flexible 100 watt panel from Renogy. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but the biggest one really is because it only weighs 4.2 pounds or about two kilos, which is a tiny fraction of what a regular 100 watt panel would weigh. It also is much lower profile, so there's less wind resistance up there on the roof rack. And I suppose the biggest question there is, will it actually be durable enough? And for my needs for this trip, the answer has been yes. That panel has been flawless for the entire trip. I've never even thought about it other than trying to wipe the dust off it once every couple of weeks when I see that it maybe isn't making as much power as it could be. Really lightweight, really durable. This panel has been excellent. And in fact, I'll probably go with exactly the same thing again next time. A lot of people ask too, what do I think about flat mounting it up on the roof rack so that it's permanent? And yes, that definitely has some trade-offs. When I was camping with my uncle, he had a portable panel and he could angle it for the sun and move it around in camp. So he would pull in a lot more charge than I would. But the thing about that is it only works when you get it out. So mine is always charging. Whether I'm at a grocery store, whether I'm just driving, or whether I've kind of got to camp late and I didn't pull it out at night, before I even get out of bed in the morning, this thing is already charging. And so for my needs, for what I do, I'm on the road a lot. I move most days. I don't often stay in the same place twice. I think it makes way more sense to have panels that are permanently mounted, permanently wired in, and then you're always charging. It's not as efficient, it's not pointing at the sun perfectly, but I think continuous charge of imperfect is better than perfect charge some of the time. And the other reason is, of course, I just don't wanna to have to set up and pack up another thing every day. And then you have to find somewhere to put it, you have to wipe the dirt and the mud off of it whenever it gets dirty, the cables inevitably get frayed and damaged, yet another thing to maintain and, and add to your burden when you're on the road. So for me, flat mounting a panel on the roof, it is absolutely what I'll do again in the future. Final thing to note, Renogy do make a 50 watt version of this that's really small. They make a 175 watt version and they've just come out with a 200 watt version as well. Basically exactly the same panel, just gets bigger with wattage. And yes, I seriously considered going bigger, but the considerations of the roof rack, I had surfboards, I didn't want to mount them on the canvas top, all of those things combined kind of meant that I settled on the 100 watt panel. The next thing to talk about in my setup is the lithium ion battery. And I went with a 50 amp hour battery from Renogy. This battery was literally half the size and half the weight of my previous AGM 50 amp hour battery. So huge gains right there. And another big advantage of lithium that lots of people don't consider as well is how quickly they can take charge. So just the chemistry is different and the amount of energy that you can pump into them in let's say an hour is way more than you can put into an old school AGM battery in an hour. So if your battery is low or you do need to get it charged up, you see some people just idle their engine or they just kind of drive around aimlessly trying to charge the batteries. When you've got lithium, you can do that way faster than when you've got old school AGM batteries. And on the sizing of this battery, 50 amp hours, lots of people would say is not big enough. It's too small. Well, after living with it for a year, I can tell you, I think it's the perfect size for what I've got here. And obviously it's gonna depend a lot on your scenario, what power needs do you have, things like that. For me, the biggest one has been the fridge is really the biggest continuous power draw. And I've got the Dometic 55 liter 
you know, open from the top fridge. So that runs 24 seven. That's obviously always depleting the battery when it's on, but with the solar panel and with charging off the alternator, the 50 amp hour battery has been perfect. A couple of other power drawers, the water pump, it doesn't really run very often. Any of the LED lights we have around camp, they're really not using much power. And then charging other electronics too, like my camera batteries, my drone, all of those things. The, the only caveat to that has been charging both of our laptops. And so our laptops actually pull quite a lot of current and I do have to be careful. And I think in the entire year, I've drained the battery, I think twice, only because I wasn't very careful about how I was charging my laptop. Especially because I'm doing a lot of video editing, I basically have to have my laptop plugged in the entire time I'm editing video, which means it's just drinking power. If I do that while the sun's out, there is no problem at all. The 100 watt panel is supplying more than the power that the laptop is going to use. The problem comes when I do it at night. And I can do it for maybe two hours, no problem at all. The battery can handle that. The problem comes when I'm not concentrating and four or even six hours goes by of just my laptop drinking power from the battery and there's no sun to replenish it. And so yeah, twice on the trip, I have drained the 50 amp hour battery and it has a built-in protection mode. It'll cut itself off. So the fridge turns off, all of that kind of stuff until the following day when either the sun comes out or we start driving again and then the battery will you know, start recharging and the system will turn back on and everything's okay again. So I think in terms of battery size, if I was building this same vehicle again, I would do exactly the same thing again. It has been perfect for my needs. I would go to a bigger battery if, for example, I had a freezer, which I don't have, or if there were other big full-time power needs that I simply need more power, then I would definitely consider the 100 amp hour battery. And the final piece of the puzzle to talk about is the Renogy charge controller. This thing maintains the battery and it charges either off the alternator when the engine's running or off the solar panels, and it keeps the Jeep battery isolated from the house battery. And this charge controller, it has a lot of features and it's doing a lot of really intelligent stuff. But actually, the number one reason that I love it is because it's so cheap. It's $250. Whereas when you look at competing products from other brands, they start at $1,500. So we're talking about six times the price to do the same thing. And does it do it well? Yes, it does it really well. It's been doing it for all year on the road, not a single problem. And it does some things that are really intelligent. When you're driving, it doesn't just try and pull all the power from the alternator, it says, why don't we lessen the load on the alternator as much as possible? If it's a bright sunny day, there's lots of power coming from the solar panel. We'll prioritize that and we'll just top up with the alternator to put as much charge in as the battery can handle. So that's really nice. Obviously it isolates the battery as well. Once you turn the engine off, your Jeep starter battery is separate from the house battery. So there's no risk of draining the battery that's under the bonnet here. And I can say in the whole year, it's not even possible, but it never has happened. The Jeep battery is just a separate thing. And so I don't have to worry about a flat battery. The other thing it does in that same line, it actually trickle charges the Jeep starter battery once the house battery is full. And on a day like today, there's lots of blue sky, the sun's out. Even though I've got my laptop plugged in, even though I'm using lots of systems, at some point today, I guarantee the house battery will be full and I'll see the little light blinking on the charge controller, which means it's actually trickle charging the Jeep's battery. So if I have the radio on, or if I leave some constantly open closed doors so that interior lights are coming on, the Jeep starter battery will actually be fully topped up, even though I'm not driving anywhere. So this charge controller basically does it all, and it does it all for $250. That's a win in anyone's book. So as I said, the whole system has performed flawlessly and I really like it. There are, well, there is one major thing that I would do differently next time. And that's basically just an oversight on my behalf. And that is I would add a screen so I can monitor the state of charge of the battery. So when I built this system, I actually just didn't even know this existed. Renogy make a screen, it's $100. 
And basically what you do is you charge the battery until it's totally 100% full, drive around for a week or whatever you're gonna do with no power coming out of the battery so you know it's full. Then you tell the unit how many amp hours your battery is, 50 in my case, and then you basically wire things up so that all of the power that flows in or out of the battery has to go through this thing called a shunt, which basically just is watching all of the energy flowing in and out. So then it can know exactly how much is in the battery because let's say 10 amp hours go out and five amp hours go in, well then you're down five, so you're at 45 out of 50 amp hours, whatever percentage that is. And it will show you in real time at all times how much is flowing in, how much is flowing out, how charged your battery is, all of that kind of stuff. And the reason that I really want one is because a few people that I've traveled with have them. So Josh in his big troopy and some of the other people driving around Australia. And it's just so handy to be able to glance at it and just say, oh, my battery's at 80% or, oh gee, my battery's at 20%. I better not plug the laptop in and you know reprioritize what I'm doing. The way that I have it now, I kind of monitor it with Bluetooth on my phone and it's not ideal or it's not exactly accurate as to how much charge is in the battery. The system can tell me how much charge is going in perfectly from the panel, from the alternator, but it can't know how much is in the battery because it's not watching exactly how much power is flowing in and out of the battery at any time. So definitely I will add a screen next time. I really love just being able to see at any moment how much power is in the battery. And then I touched on this earlier, one other thing that would need to be considered is the overall size of your system and how do you keep all of that in balance. So I'm a really strong believer, there's no point in having a vehicle that can carry enough drinking water for 30 days if you can only carry enough food for 10 days. That just isn't in balance. And so there's no reason to have 200 amp hours of battery if you only have the fridge that I have and a couple of small power needs. So when I designed this, I tried to match everything together. The solar panel at 100 watts, I think is perfect for charging a 50 amp hour battery. But let's hypothetically say, I'm gonna have a freezer as well as a fridge next time. I think that by definition needs a 100 amp hour battery. So I would increase the battery size for sure. Now with a 100 amp hour battery, I would probably wanna increase the solar panel too. Going up to 200 watts would be really nice. Fitting it on the roof here would be a challenge. That's a challenge for a different day. And then the other thing to think about too, the charge controller that I've got, it can charge at a maximum of 30 amps. It can get 15 of that from the alternator and 15 from the solar panel, but details don't really matter. 30 amps is the maximum it can put in. And I decided because I only have a 50 amp hour battery, that means it can fully charge the battery in about an hour and a half if I'm driving and it's sunny. So for me, that's pretty good. But obviously if I went up to a 100 amp hour battery, that kind of changes that whole equation. Now you're looking at kind of three to four hours to charge the whole thing. Like, yeah, that starts to be different. So maybe what I would do is also increase the charge controller. Renogy make a 50 amp hour version of this same, exactly the same charge controller. It can just charge at 50 amps instead of 30, which I think if you had a bigger battery, that makes sense. So in terms of the overall system size, I think for what I did, it's perfect. If I had induction cooking, or if I had a freezer, or if I was really, if I upgrade my laptop and I'm really doing a lot more video work, I will probably just increase the size of each item. Bigger battery, bigger solar panel, bigger charge controller, of course, all of that takes up more space and all of that is using up your precious payload. So it's a fine balance to find the right sweet spot. But overall, the system has been flawless and I would definitely do the same thing or a slight variation on the same thing next time. So that has been the review of the whole Renogy 12 volt setup in my Jeep. And I should add too, if you're interested, there's a link in the description and a 10% discount code for the Renogy store. So if you wanna buy a similar setup, if you wanna have a look what they've got, you'll get a 10% discount if you use the code down in the description. So I'm planning to do a few more review videos on how the Gladiator worked, on how the systems I built and designed work. If you've got some questions, if you've got a specific system you wanna know more about, let me know down in the comments and I'll film those videos for you so that you can learn from what I've done, what worked well, what I'm gonna do differently next time. Thanks again very much for watching. I hope the video has been helpful. If you have any more questions about the whole 12 volt setup, about the Renogy gear, about anything related to that, do leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer and help you out. 
So until next time, have fun out there and maybe I'll bump into you on the road.